Z, the buzz of Cincinnati. Lincoln, we're with you till 2 o'clock this afternoon, and we're getting there pretty fast. But right now, in the studio with me, none other than the mayor of Kansas City, Sly James. And welcome to Cincinnati. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. Nice city. Oh, you know, I, and you know it kind of reminds me of Kansas City a little bit. I mean, you know, if you look at the suburban areas, and, you know, it's, it's sort of on the same plane. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I think that we have a lot of things in common, one of which is our desire to do something that transforms cities and that's build that first modern streetcar line now how hard was it for kansas city to get a streetcar going oh. it, it was it as hard as it is here in cincinnati well it's kind of hard to say how hard something yeah. is someplace where you're not at but i will say this uh we certainly had our cavemen who uh who opposed <laughs> it and uh and by cavemen we mean simply citizens against virtually everything mm -hmm. um, we've got a lot of those here in this town let me tell you they proliferate in places where others are trying to get things done that's where they hunt Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but the bottom line is, yes, we had opposition, but we also had such strong support yeah. from certain segments of our community mm -hmm. and the way that we did it that we were able to get it done without a huge amount yeah. of rancor. Yeah. Now, we're still in the earlier phases. We're about ready to start construction. And uh, as we start to expand the line, which is inevitable, mm -hmm. uh, then I'm sure that we'll see more cavemen come out. Yeah. Now, what about uh, uh, along the route of the street? So is it up and running now, Park? Of it. Okay, you're still in the building phase. You are still in the building okay. phase. We just received the $20 million uh, Tiger Grant from the federal government. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, something that was extremely uh, needed and helpful. Uh, but we expect to be up and running by the midsummer or early fall of 2015. Now, what about the businesses along the route? Has the property values gone up? Have people started to get ready to open businesses already? How's that phase going? Well, let me just read a couple of things to you. Uh, there's an out-of-town out developer from Boulder, Colorado, uh, who's planning to build a 45 to 50-unit apartment complex along the route. And his quote in the paper was, the streetcar is the big reason that drew us. Absolutely. We like the demographics and the economic trends. I walked the area. I like the site. We're big believers in markets away from the coast. We're looking at what we consider to be big league cities, not Chicago or Houston, but places like Denver, Kansas City, and Cincinnati particularly with the momentum of transit-oriented development. Mm -hmm. So that's a new building that's going up. We have a new 331-unit apartment that's going up adjacent to the streetcar unit, a uh, 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 streetcar line. Across the street from that, a renovation of an older existing building with another 75 units. In all, by 2015, we'll have an exist a new set of 1,500 residential units. We will also have several businesses that are going up. Now, what has been the, uh, you know, the outcry against it in your town? I know people saying nobody's going to ride it. Uh, it's going to cost the city so many million dollars a year to operate it. Uh, were you guys hearing the same things? Were you well, of course we do. But here's the thing that people seldom talk about. And that is it costs the, the biggest subsidized mode of transportation of cars and buses. Mm -hmm. All right. If they want to see where money is really spent, tell them to start looking at how much money is spent on keeping roads up and highways up and making sure the vehicles and buses run. Uh, every mode of transportation is subsidized to some extent. That's across the country. It's never been any different. It's not going to change. And we had people who don't believe in things until they actually yeah. see them. Yeah. But all they have to do if they want to see is go to Seattle, mm -hmm. go to Portland, go to Denver, go to Dallas, go to Minneapolis. Come to Cincinnati here in a couple of years. Come to Kansas City. You will see what happens. Go to Charlotte, where there is absolute proof. Yeah, yeah. Now, the interesting thing about Charlotte, the new uh, Secretary of Transportation, Anthony Fox, was the mayor of Charlotte. Yes, yes, yes. And we spent some time down at Charlotte about two years ago on a chamber tour from Kansas City. And what we saw was the photographs of the area where they put in their last streetcar line before it went in, mm -hmm. and the photographs after. We actually went out and saw what it was like after. Let me tell you, if you have any doubts about transit-oriented development, then go to a place like Charlotte and look. Go to Portland and see that they had over $6 billion of investments in the last five years within a block or two of the streetcar line. 
Well, you know, in this town, I mean, years ago, we've got an un we've got an unfinished subway in this town. Yeah. You know, and I'm just thinking. How's that working out? Uh, you know, I'm saying, if we had, just think what the city would be if they had completed that underground subway. We would be, uh, you know, you talk about major league city. We would be a major league city if they had completed that underground subway, I do believe. Well, you know what? I was talking to Liza on the way over. And we talked about the fact that about 20, 25 years ago, the federal government was having these big transportation parties. Started at about 7 o'clock. If you got there around 7 to 8, you could get a door prize of hundreds of millions of dollars for transportation. Now, Kansas City had a reputation at that time as never missing an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, that sounds and, like Cincinnati. And so we got to the party at 11 o'clock, and the beer's gone, there's potato chip left, and the money's all gone. Mm -hmm. Now, we're waiting. While yeah. everybody else who got that money, yeah. look at what they've done. Yeah. Yeah. They built systems that have transformed their entire cities. It takes tremendous, strong, courageous, visionary leadership to be able to hold tight to a vision like this while others are pushing back and mm -hmm. talking about yeah. the short-term issues. If you're going to be a first-class city, you have yeah. to make first-class investments. And again, how's that unfinished subway working out for the city now? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, I mean, we missed out on a big opportunity. And, uh, and some of those people who were living back then, their kids are fighting against the streetcar right now. Their kids and grandkids are the same people fighting against the streetcar right now. Well, I will tell you with uh, probably a great deal of assuredness that after the streetcar is up and running and everybody wants one in their very own backyard, that those people who are fighting yeah. against it will be the ones saying it was my idea in yeah, the first yeah, place. Yeah. We all know how that goes, but that's what leadership is for. You can't get distracted by the people who are constantly going to complain and gripe and be negative. Mm -hmm good leadership in this day and age, we should be able to see the difference between good leadership, which comes at the city level, versus the leadership we get at the federal level. They're not getting anything done. You want things done, you got to be at the city level. And if you're going to get it done in the city, you've got to have leaders that are looking down the road, not five steps, but 500 mm -hmm. steps, and seeing what could be there and making sure it happens. That's what you got here with Roxanne, and that's what you got here with Wendell. 749-1230-513 is the area code if you want to talk to the mayor of Kansas City in town, in Cincinnati, Sly James, mayor of Kansas City at 749-1230, telling us how great it is that we are, uh, you know, on the forefront of a streetcar here in Cincinnati. Now, do you still have people out there trying to fight it even though it's under construction now? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And they're going to continually yeah. do that because, you know, I had a Mima once that told me once, you know, she, she when I would show my hard-headedness, and we all know what that is, she'd say, boy, you don't believe fat is greasy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, well, it's the same thing yeah. with these folks. They mm -hmm. don't, they're not going to believe it until they can actually see it and touch yeah. it, and then they'll still right. find a reason yeah. to gripe. Now, what's the, what type of uh, city government do you have in Kansas City? Strong mayor, city manager type, what? We have a um, um, council manager form of government with, mm -hmm. uh, in, at least in my administration, as strong of a mayor as I can get away with being. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, how many council members you have? We have 12 council people. Okay. We're divided up into six council districts. Okay. District. So we have okay. one council person per district, okay. so six. And then we have six at large. Okay. And uh, then I vote. So we have 13 voters in the legislative aspects of, uh, of the council. And, and I think uh, I like that uh, district type of government. I do think that's what we need here in Cincinnati. I think we could get a lot more accomplished, and I think people would be uh, a lot more satisfied with the way government works if you had one person in your district that you can hold accountable for your district. Well, I think certainly think you can make an argument for that. I think, that, frankly, it's going to be a matter of who's in the office. Because basically, if you've got the right people in office, they don't need to have a district to be yeah. responsible to constituents. Mm -hmm. You know, good mayors don't have a district. Right, right. They have a city, and they need to be responsible to everybody in that city. Mm -hmm. But I understand the point of district representation. It cuts it down a little bit, yeah, narrows the yeah. focus. Mm -hmm. But you always have to make sure that somebody is watching out for the whole. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we can't let the district divisiveness, I want my share, you get your share. Yeah. You That's know, why you got the other six at large, I guess, that's that, right. to, to balance it out. Well, you have to. Somebody's got to watch the whole, and others got to watch yeah. the, the districts. Mm -hmm. Each district has its own needs, its own issues and peculiarities that we have to address. 
but the city as a whole will not survive if we get into dividing everything yeah. by six. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, 749-1230. June, you have a question for the mayor yes. of Kansas City. Mayor of Kansas City, I, I, I don't think you really understand why there's been such an opposition to this. And the opposition is that we can't afford it. We're a city that's been dealing with budget crisis. We're a city that's been sold off our assets because they're saying we need money. So in our situation, we're spending over well into over a hundred million dollars while other issues are not being addressed. So let me ask you, now when you, did you all put your, your streetcar issue on the ballot for your citizens to vote for uh, straight up or down? Yep. Okay, well, in the city, they use trickery to get their ballot issues passed. It was on there and twice, June. It was on the it ballot was, twice and it passed on both twice. times. And both times, trickery was used because it was a straight up or down vote. Yes didn't mean yes and no didn't mean no. It was a confusion where no meant yes and yes meant no. So quite a few people were, were very confused about it and uh, the vote was very close. So, you know, in this kind of situation, I really want you to understand why, probably why you were brought in here. It was to try to appease us. We're not appeased by what is going on. You know, I've been a woman who's traveled from New York City quick, to quick, Washington, D.C., and, Ch and Chicago, and San Diego. They have a real rail system. We have a choo-choo train, and we don't appreciate the city of Cincinnati spending a hundred million dollars while our communities are crumbling. Okay, all right. All right. Is there a question there? <laughs> no let question. Me, let, me, let me say this. If you think that the city of New York went out and built that entire system in one fell swoop, you are absolutely incorrect. And if you think that any city in this country under the current set of circumstances with the way the federal government and state governments are operating, state governments being semi-crazy half the time, taking money back where it shouldn't be taken back, passing laws that hurt the collection of uh, taxes and fees and limiting cities' ability to take care of their own affairs, that's all great. Nonetheless, you cannot stop building your city at any time. If you stop building your city, we will come and take your stuff. It's just that simple. Everybody wants what you've got. Everybody wants what we've got. We all want young talent coming to this city. We want density so that we can have a better, firmer tax base and better infrastructure. We want businesses moving in. Everybody does. And the competition is fierce. This is one of the things that you need to do in order to compete. And the fact that the thing passed twice, I guess <laughs> people weren't that faked out if they passed it twice. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll come back. 12:30. The buzz. <laughs> Janice, how are you? Good afternoon, Lincoln, and uh, welcome to Cincinnati. Thank you. I love it here. Thank you. I'm glad you do. Um, it's very refreshing hearing your perspective, um, and I agree with it. Um, also, I voted twice on that, and I understood it both times. Uh, I do think being a visionary sometimes is very difficult. But if you don't do anything, then nothing gets done. Amen. And then we will be behind the eight ball. You know, uh, if, if we don't do something, as I said before, uh, where will we be in five or ten years? So I think it's a good thing. And uh, once again, welcome to Cincinnati. I hope you enjoy your stay here. Thank you very much, and I will. And uh, I very much appreciate the hospitality. And I agree with you. If you don't do anything, you are headed towards ruin. And I can tell you that, that because uh, in 2002, when I moved my office in Kansas City, my law office in Kansas City, down to downtown, uh, it was barren. It was quiet. There's nothing happening at night. And there's a photograph of the pre uh Power and Light District, which is our downtown entertainment district, which is adjacent to the new Sprint Arena uh, that I have. And, and it's a chair sitting in uh, space number 44 of a parking lot. And in the backdrop are boarded up buildings that were used for Halloween haunted houses. Uh, in the parking lot, there's three, four, five cars, but that's about it. And this chair. That chair now sits at center court of the Sprint Arena. And now you can't get in there. Sprint Arena is the third uh, busiest uh, entertainment venue in the country and the 11th busiest entertainment venue in the world. 
And that happened because people, visionary leaders, who, by the way, I will say this, and I, I want to give her credit, Kay Barnes was a visionary woman who got this done, and she had to fight tooth and nail every inch of the way, and now the same people who opposed her are taking credit for yeah, it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> One last thing, Lincoln, I would like to say, too, that it was refreshing to hear Miss Dillingham. Yes, yes. Uh, and if, you know, sometimes when we continue to get the same uh, ideas and things uh, recycled, we continue to get the same ideas and, mm -hmm. uh, and things uh, done. So it's good to hear someone new with a new vision and some new ideas coming in to, uh, to uh, participate. So All right. Hey, Dennis, thanks show. for your call. Thanks mm -hmm. for your call. Appreciate Thank it. you very much. All right, let's move along. Looks like uh, T-Bone is up. T-Bone, then Ernesto, and uh, we may have time for one more caller after that. Go ahead, T-Bone, real quick. Lincoln, hi to you and your guest. Hello, Here's sir. what I would like to say to you, uh, sir. You may not be uh, up on the current events. You are you are into current events, but there were past events that made us not want this. Um, the people who voted against this streetcar was because we had entered into so many bad deals. Our county put two stadiums in our city that we are still paying for, and they were losing teams at the time. We got to pay to get in, and it's a bad deal to... That's an all-the-way bad deal. The African-American inclusion, when all these projects have been, like over a million, a billion dollars been spent, and African-Americans ain't seen a million of it. So Lincoln knows all this stuff is true. So for what some of the people have made so many bad decisions prior to now that when the street car thing came up, the amount of miles had changed. They told us it was going to be... Uh, Five miles, three miles, then down to two, and in a general well, area. Well, I mean, there, there were reasons for that because the the, the the governor took away what twenty five million, and uh, you know, so there were reasons they had to cut the route. I hear what you're saying, T Bone. We're running short of time. Thanks for your call. I mean, he makes a good point there. Well, you know what? One of the things that every mayor in this country does is deal with decisions that somebody made 10, 15 years ago. That's part of the job. Mm -hmm. So what? Somebody made some bad decisions down the road, if, in fact, they were bad. Yes, so you're going to stop doing anything? You know, you're going to cut off your face to spite your nose or cut off your nose to spite your face, whichever way it works. Bottom line is you can't stop trying to get better. And I hope that you are now getting into the stadiums free since Cincinnati is winning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody sent me a text message that says uh, they'll be in Kansas City for the Black Expo in oh, good. November. Outstanding. Yeah. Man, Outstanding. Guy, his name is Otto. He'll, he'll be working the stage. Fantastic. In Kansas City. I'll Ernesto, try to remember to look him up. You got uh, about uh, one minute, Ernesto. How are you guys doing? Uh, listen, uh, 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 current mayor, current vice mayor, Roxanne Quarles, on. Um, he owns a uh, part owner in a real estate company that's buying property along the streetcar route. And what about you, sir? Do you have any investments in a, a real estate company or a construction company? I'll hang up list of my answer. Thanks for your call. I don't have any money, <laughs> so I don't have any investments in anything. Um, I am the mayor of a city, and I don't have any investments in anything except my law firm, uh, which at this point in time is limited fairly much to doing mediations. And I think that you ought to be cognizant and careful about the implication of your statement without facts. The fact that she may have an interest doesn't mean that she has a conflict of interest. All right, that's spoken from a lawyer right there. That's a lawyer right there. <laughs> Sly James, thank you for joining me this afternoon. My really pleasure. Appreciate it. It's appreciate been a blast. It. I'll have to look you up if I'm ever in Kansas City again. I will. Uh, you do that, and we'll find you some barbecue. Uh, all right. Hopefully then. you can throw a stick and hit barbecue, <laughs> and you'll love it. There you go. All right. That's going to wrap it up for me for a Friday. Don't forget, I'll be broadcasting live out of Jeff Weiler, Route 32 in Batavia, tomorrow from 11 to 1. One, instead of the normal 12 to 2, I'll be there from 11 to 1. Yes, Mayor. I just want to say one last time before I go, I've had a chance to spend some time with Councilman uh, Wendell and with uh, Vice Mayor Quarles, and I just want to make sure that you understand that these people, uh, they're not perfect, none of us are, but they certainly are trying to do the very best they can for this city. They believe deeply in what they're doing, they're committed, and they're going to keep fighting to try to get the right thing done, and that'll benefit every single person in the city. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you coming on today. And it's been enlightening, that's for sure. That's going to do it. Al Sharpton's coming up next.